Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and just dive in and give you guys my thoughts on pretty much 3.25 as a whole. A lot of people came to my live stream and said they wanted to watch the uh, live reaction in the VOD, but unfortunately uh, I have audio being split right now and I forgot to remove that. So we're just going to do one for YouTube instead. And nothing here is new. I have seen everything, but I'm going to tell you guys how I feel about it. That being said, let's get into it. Lost is a cursed land. You'd have to be mad to settle here. And yet... Welcome to King's March! It's not much yet, but with your help, we can erect the greatest city Rayclast has ever seen. We'll need resources. And savvy planning. So I have to state one thing, you know, really quickly. I love, I don't know if I, like, I, I don't know if I love city building as a genre. I think I do. I've never played like a standalone city builder for the sake of city building. But one thing I can say that I really liked about Wilson is that the one good thing about that game is it had a really cool system of city building while also being an ARPG. And that's something I never see in games because it's probably hard to integrate so I'm actually very excited for this league. I'm a big fan of this style, this system, especially when it's we still have the entirety of Path of Exile, but then we get this on top of it. Soon we'll attract settlers, craftsmen. This here as well, this is uh, showing that Recombinators are back. They did say they were nerfed. Very excited for this. I want to see how rare it is to acquire recombinators because I haven't really shed too much info. I haven't, I basically haven't really been thinking about them because I'm just so used to them not being here. But I think maybe I might have to start, you know, keeping some specific plus one amulets just for recombinating and scepters. Fortune seekers. And of course, pirates. This as well is really cool. The boss bar, I know we talked about this in the spoilers, but now actually like seeing it in action, it's pretty cool. I think it'll make the fights feel more epic. But if we prevail, our sh And then this is super cool. Being able to generate, these are like the resources you farmed in the maps, right? And then uh, you send your people out because you're trading these resources for other stuff. I think it's going to be very cool. The UI seems pretty clean. It doesn't seem super clunky. Like everything is pretty obvious. There's a little slider, so it seems pretty clean. I'm not feeling the Necropolis flashback, so. Ships will be heavy with gold. We hope to achieve the impossible. We hope to build a home. Respecking with gold is an interesting one. Uh, I think that this will maybe make the campaign more smooth. They did say that gold is not actually tradable, so it's pretty much just for you to use. And I really like this system. I'm curious. I was against them adding gold before, but seeing as it's auto pickup doesn't take up an inventory spot, is seamless, and is used for respecking along with other things, it seems like a smart way to integrate it with PoE. The actual auction house, I forgot about this. We have a, a currency market thing. I've been asking about this for the longest time. Uh, a lot of people always basically said like, yeah, but bots are gonna be able to manipulate everything anyway. But I mean, the reality is if you're trading for currency like this, trading like, you know, buying scarabs, buying, uh, you know, whatever, converting alterations to whatever, there's probably like a 30% chance that the person responds to you is a bot that's just like, trading for you or like with you while the guy's doing his homework or something and those are usually the cleanest trades you know you get the invite you go to the guy's hideout he's a duelist sitting in the you know the like little uh whatever flowery area the grassy area it takes like 10 seconds for him to trade you he does his little shift does the trade and then moves back to his stat those are all bots so i'm very curious about this one of the biggest things i don't like about softcore trade is after about you know a week or two of playing it I decide to myself, you know what? I just want to blow all my currency and have fun mapping. And then I look at having to buy all the scarabs and setting up the Atlas strategy. And honestly, to be fair, it's not nearly as bad now, but bulk trading can still be a pain in the ass. And anything that's stackable is now tradable through here to an extent. So just that alone gets me very interested in wanting to be able to just be like, I'm playing softcore trade. Here's my currency. I want this one. Take it, right? Oh, 
Oh, and actually, the fact that you can like set it up, go map, and it will prompt you when it's finished or if it completes is even better. You have the seamless experience. You don't have the interruption of like, you know, uh, Jimbo123 says that he would like to buy your five divine orbs listed for 22 chaos. You know, and then you take the portal and you go back and you interrupt your experience. You miss all your buffs, all your shrine buffs are gone. Then you go back into the map and you forgot what you're doing and then you get one shot, right? Like, definitely not speaking from experience. That was pretty interesting. The, uh, I was not expecting this, the entire overhaul redo of Raider. Raider getting turned into Warden, the elemental attack build ascendancy basically not elemental attack oh yeah elemental based attacks pretty interesting the gladder or gladiator rework i was actually expecting i really like the rework and then the melee the melee rework looks sick or not really rework but buffs Then there is this system, which is the new, like, basically a new way to put an enchant on something, which looks awesome. Very awesome. I'm curious to see if there's anything in there for us for RF. Uh, so far, there is, like, additional dagger, but that's mainly for, like, I guess the Juggernaut Inquisitor version. I mean, technically, as Chieftain, we could put, like, Enfeeble or something else on there, right? But I'm very curious to see because this is very cool. This system as well, wait for it. This one, the Calandra Reflection. I'm not a big fan of Calandra. I feel like some of the outcome of items are just really broken. But then again, it's okay. You know, I'm getting a lot of stuff that I like. I'm totally fine with this. And I don't think I have to like build the tablets or anything. So that's also fine too. Uh, this over here, actually, what is this? Oh, there we go. They're the one I just skipped over right there. Where did it go? This one. This is actually a really cool system. This is where the settlers that you hire, you can actually send them to go do maps for you while you map yourself. Very cool system. I like that all of this stuff is kind of set up passively. It makes it very good for people like me who love mapping and want to interact with the league mechanic, but I am just addicted and it's, it, you know, once the league releases, I've got a quota to fill. If I'm not killing at least 3 million monsters when I type slash kills by like the end of the week, you know, like I, I need to kill more. It's just, I don't know, it's a weird thing, man. I just got to grind. It's very important for me. So when I get a league mechanic that enforces that, you know, I get to set them up. I get to tell them, you know, go over and acquire that resource, run these set of maps, etc. And then I get to go back and focus with the core game. I really like that. I say this a lot. I'm a big fan of the base game of Path of Exile. I don't need something to constantly alter what is happening with the game for me, right? Example, Necropolis constantly making all mobs pissed off and seeing corpses littered all over Rayclast. I don't, I don't want that, right? This, for me personally, is something really cool. I'm just, I, like, I, I am super excited to see kind of where this goes. This is also an interesting thing. This is, I think they said for the campaign specifically, they have this system in PoE2, I believe. Maybe it's not actually Gamble, but this is basically like Expedition Gwen, except you use your gold, and they said it's primarily for the campaign. I'm curious. And that's pretty much everything. I mean, I have to say at the end of the day, I'm very excited for it. It's probably one of the leagues I've been the most hyped for as I was not expecting this. I think the only legitimate thing that would probably rival my excitement here would be if they made like a, a bullet heaven uh, version of PoE, right? Like kind of like, you know, vampire survivors of some way. I don't know how they would integrate that and it would be really imbalanced but RF Chieftain would destroy that content. <laughs> anyway, that is pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. The RF Chieftain is actually looking really good. Um, I'm working on a POB over here. I'm just gonna flash it for you guys, but I'm not providing any links yet. It's looking real nice for League Start. We're looking block-based now. I'm very excited. Anyway, I'm going to catch you guys all later. Thanks, everyone, so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Remember, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box, except for Sundays. See you guys all later.